Hello, and welcome back to The Sim. In this one, we're jumping in because we've got access to B events and B vars now with spad.next in 0.9.15. So let's go ahead, jump into the SWS PC12, since there's a bunch we're gonna get to use. So jumping inside, we're gonna focus here on the APHIS panel today because there is a mix of B events and H events, which we have to control. But first, let's just cover something really quick. Uh, they kind of were introduced with software update 13, but it turned out it was broken and you couldn't do anything with them unless you were in dev mode. Well, now with SU14, that part is complete. So we can now get access to the events. However, they don't expose all of it. So there are other ones that aren't getting exposed, such as toggles, on offs, increments, decrements. If it is just a toggle, that seems to work. So if there is just one uh, BVAR button event and there weren't multiples uh, and didn't have a set, it seems that the first one must be the one that's being enumerated. What I know is this is nothing to do with SPAD. This is everything to do with Microsoft Flight Simulator right now. So what does that mean for us? Well, some of these things are H events. We've always had controls to get to those, but some of the others are actually calling up B events. So here, for example, with the heading bug and syncing it just there, that was the equivalent of pressing the button here. So we're gonna go ahead, move it, and click down here on the heading knob that's actually using and sending a B event. So jumping over into SPAD, uh, I'd already started setting up some of my APHIS on the Stream Deck Plus. Now, one thing to note is if you come over to settings and you come over to status, what's great is you'll now see these B events and VARs. So every time you load into a plane, this is gonna change. So it's kind of like LVARs, in that it can scrape them and pull them out, but you have to be in a plane for them to load. So just like LVARs. So the difference with B events and H events, so if you recall for a long time now, we've been able to do things like send H events because of the bridge, but all of those, you have to know what they are and have created them. So when we set up these H events, you're gonna have come in here and found them under the Microsoft events, under custom events. And as you would scroll down, you'd be here to the PC 12, and we would be seeing all of the PC 12 events. And you see them listed as HTML events. This is because other users have gone off, gone through the files, found all these. They went over to client events, which we've done in a separate video, uh, which allows you to then manually add them into your file set. Nice people have taken those, sent them off, they have been uploaded into an Excel file, which then gets loaded in, and when you launch spad.next and you see those checking for updates, that's not just a full application update, any of these types of events get pushed through that mechanism. So these lists automatically populate without the requirement of installing in a complete application update. So there is lots of updates happening, uh, even without your SPAD version being updated. So these H events, which we can't scrape, so those manually get added. So yes, everything uh, that's possible is always available inside of SPAD because this is a kept list. Whereas what you're going to find is under your B events, this is what it's pulling in from the plane. So when the plane loads, all of its behavioral files have these input events listed inside of them and it serves it up. So SPAD is able to scrape those down. So here we're going to go and look at, say, the HSI. Yes, we used an H event for that. But when you looked at the heading knob, it was the standard heading bug increment and decrement. However, the pushing of the button used a standard template or a B event. And that was the autopilot heading sync event. So simply we did the same thing. We clicked on add an event. We clicked on, in this case, I was using a short press. I added an action. I went to send simulation event and I highlighted the B events. And then as I normally do, I just kind of started typing in heading uh, and it starts bringing up the B events that are available. So 
autopilot heading, autopilot heading mode, autopilot heading sync. So this heading sync, I assigned it to the button. And then what I did was I went into Microsoft Flight Sim. I made sure that my increment worked. And then I pushed the button and the heading synced and did exactly what I expected. Let's go ahead and use the example of, is it possible for us to trigger the autopilot heading button? We'll take the nav button and we'll simply go in. I will change the title. And since I had copied and pasted these, and so autopilot heading lock, uh, so instead of nav lock, we're going to use the heading lock. So we're just changing the condition uh, and heading lock. So now that button will change. The button was just changing whether or not it turns on the light. So instead of nav hold and the standard AP nav hold event, what we want to do is be specific and send the B VAR. So hopefully by triggering the B vent or event, I should say, not VAR, VAR is when you read it, event is when you send it. They have similar names, but they're actually, there's a separate VAR from the event. So when we send the simulation event, we can go into the Bs and we can see that as we scroll down, we find the B autopilot and we find heading. And so we're gonna click on heading and let's see if heading is going to trigger the heading mode. So clicking on that button, turns on heading, but the B event does not. So let's come back and let's put a static value of one. So since that did not work, We will try heading mode instead. And now you can see that heading mode does trigger the heading button. So that is one of the easiest ways to work your way through it. Um, and the only reason why I bring that up is yes, it would have been actually probably simple for us to have gone into Dev mode. Turn on our behaviors. Then if we highlight on that heading button and hit control G, it opens up to it. Now, right away, you'll see that the input events did not load in. This is the thing that always happens when you first load. And as of right now, it's the B event is still working until we do this quick reload. And on this quick reload, it's gonna break a lot of the external connection stuff. It actually even breaks autopilot some of the time. Now, of course, funny enough, loading that way, I've lost my GTNs because of how it loaded. And now if I'm pressing that button, you'll see B events won't work. So this is where the problem is. You can find it, but you're gonna need to back out and reload the flight. So push autopilot, push heading one. And then as we come down through, we can see all of the aspects of this, the uh, template code and you can find B autopilot heading mode. And so this is the part where it gets dropped off, but since there's no other heading mode, uh, toggle is the event that it is firing. So that's how you can find these B events. Uh, it's actually quite easy to do now that you can just kind of hover on things and hit control G. But like I said, right now we know it, but now we can't turn it on. We can try restarting from here and seeing if it's going to come back. Um, but usually I dump out of dev mode and then I dump, uh, dump out of the flight and I start it all over again and press the button. And yay, you can see the button is pressing. Uh, and if we were hovering over it right now, hitting Control-G, uh, you'll see that the templates do come in. 
Um, so there you go, you learned something. I learned something at this point as well. When it comes to the B stuff, if you go to data monitor and you add data, the B events also have a var. Now you cannot write the var. You can read the vars, but you can't write them. We can control L vars, B vars, B events, H events. We have access to it all now. Well, we're gonna go ahead and cut that here. And if you made it this far, please hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't, and come along on the next one. As always, thanks for watching. Have a nice day.